Welcome to this explainer video, how to create a project schedule. So you should be positioned on the PS or project schedule sheet. And what you can see is um, the information from the activity list, much of it is pre-filled onto the project schedule. So we can see the various activities that were entered on the activity list, uh, who is assigned to the initials of the resources that are assigned to each activity and the durations that were entered on the activity list. So our main uh, task now is to indicate when the activities are going to, to uh, be scheduled in the, uh, in the project schedule. Now, there are two different types of schedules that we can have. One is a seven day schedule, which is what it's set to, to now, which is uh, activities may occur on any day of the week, including Saturdays and Sundays. The other type is a Monday to Friday, work days only from Monday to Friday. We will look at that uh, in a little while. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start entering the start dates. Now, the one thing you may notice is that the start date is, uh, is set in 2024 versus the case study from the textbook is set in 2026. Now, why is that changed here? Well, because I want to have the current date factor in, and we'll sh I'll show you why that is in a, in a little while. So for this sheet only, uh, I'm going to enter in the current year. Uh, this um, video, this schedule was created on April 12th, 2024, which is why this vertical sort of orange bar shows the current date in, in the schedule. Okay, so let's talk about uh, start dates. Some of them are pre-filled automatically. For example, the initiate the project is set to the start date as defined in the project charter. And it has, in this case, I changed it to a four day duration. And so it starts on April 4th and completes on Sunday, April 7th. So for four straight days. There's a milestone, the initiating phase complete milestone has zero days and uh, has been set to be occur on the last day, on the Sunday. And milestones are signified uh, as having a star in them. Um, you can see the, the planning phase complete uh, is automatically set. And right now is just um, the latest date in the schedule so far, which is April 7th. Okay, so now we're going to start to... Uh, uh, enter the other start dates where there is uh, a blank there because Gantup doesn't know when the plan the project uh, activity needs to begin. So one way to enter start dates, there are two, to, two ways to do it. One way is to enter, directly enter the start date into the field. So let's say that we want it to start the day after the initiating uh, phase. Uh, complete. So on, in effect on Monday, April 8th. So what we do is we just enter April 8th. Now because it's the current year, because I want 2024, I don't have to enter 2024. I just enter April 8th. If I was entering it in a, a different year than I'm currently in, I would put a comma and then I would type the year. But I don't have to do that. So I just type uh, April 8th, and it converts it into um, a numeric uh, format of date. And that's done primarily just to save a little space uh, here. And then you can see there's a seven day bar here. Now, you'll notice there's all different colors of bars. I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. So just ignore the different colors for now. But we can see that it's starting on the Monday and we have one, two, three, four, five, the, the uh, today, um, six, seven, eight. So there's the eight day duration. Again, the milestone is, is automatically set to be the last date. Okay, so we can do that. For example, the first executing uh, phase activity, let's say we want it to again, start right after the planning phase is complete on Monday, April 15th. So we'll just say April 15, enter, and it shows there and it's a gray bar. And then finally, this one for now, I won't enter them all. This one will be on April 18th. But you can see our Gantt charting, chart starting to form, and we would just continue doing this for all of our activities. Now, let's pause here to talk about the color scheme that's, that's happening here. You can see that we've got 
red, yellow, and gray. Now, red means that this activity should have been done. It's complete. It should have been complete on April 7th, but it's not done. And the reason why it's not done is because of this progress field, for example. This is where the amount complete of either 0, 25, 50, 75, uh, or, or 100 percent blank indicate is is the same as zero so this is an incomplete i haven't we haven't even started it started it yet and it's late it's it's five days overdue and so it's it's indicated to be red okay yellow on the other hand is this activity is in progress you notice how today is in the middle of it so it's 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 uh this this task is in progress, but we have 0% done on this because it's blank, so that's 0%. So yellow means it is it is becoming late. It's at a it's it's in a risk profile. Uh, gray means a future is future work that hasn't it wouldn't necessarily be started yet. Now the other color that isn't showing yet, but it will start to show, is let's go back to the first one and say, well we're actually 50% done. Now you can see that half of the bar has been turned green to say that that part is done, but we're still late on the other 50%, which is red. Let's say that we say, well, it actually is done. Well, now the bar is green. The milestone indicate, we need to indicate that it's, is it done or not? And in this case, it is. We now, this, we now have a, a green star. Uh, and the same down the line. For example, if this was 25% done, you'll see that part of, part of the activity is done, part of it is behind, and part of it is still to be done. And you can see if we make this 50%, the green increases, and so on. Uh, and then the same would be done, would be done there. So those are that's the color, that's the color scheme. And that's why. Um, I wanted this to be shown in the current year so you could see this happening. Okay, so then we would just continue to do this. For example, these are 0% because it's future work, and so we haven't got to it yet. Okay, so that is that is the color schemes. Now, let me talk a little bit now about another way of entering the start date. In these cases, we entered the date directly. But let's let's say that we didn't want to do this. Or there is another way of doing it. Okay. Now notice that the the uh, milestone turned red because it went back to be uh, April 7th and it's not done it's at 0%, so that's considered to be a problem by by Ganto. Now the other way besides just entering a date, we can attach the start date. We can uh, say that once another end date is complete, once it's done, we'll start this start date. And we do this through the use of a formula. For example, if we enter an equal sign, that signifies to, to Excel that a formula is about to come. And what we're going to say is to say, okay, let's do it one day after the end date uh, of initiating phase complete. Now, the way we do that is we, we have the equal sign there. We click on the end date of initiating phase complete. Notice how Excel automatically puts F7 into the start date. Now, what's F7? Well, that's the cell address of, of the cell. Uh, the F column, row 7, F7. Now, if we want it to occur the next day after the end date, we indicate plus one. And notice, watch what happens now with the with the uh, the Gantt chart bar. I press enter and it automatically schedules it to occur there. We can do that for each of these activities. We can say, okay, for this one, let's start it one day after the planning phase completes. And we'll equals, we'll put equals um, the date plus one, okay? And then we will, could, we, we could do the same uh, equals, uh, this one will be one day after 
this activity, and so on. Notice how that when I enter a formula, the start date is bolded. That indicates that a formula, a and this, this formula indicates a dependency has been entered. Had I just entered, for example, had I just entered April 18th, oops, that's incorrect. Let me just move that out of the way. April 18th, notice how it's not bolded. That indicates a, a date was entered there versus a, a, a formula or a dependency is entered there. Okay. You can also do other things. We, we've learned about leads and, and legs, for example. Uh, for here, this is equals F7 plus one. Let's say we want a lead. We, we want to overlap a little bit. Well, instead of plus one, we could say minus two. So to have a lead, to have it start a little bit early. Uh, and then you see what it does there. It, it went two days, actually three days early. Okay, if we want it, a two day lead, would look like that. Now it's a little bit confusing. Minus one is a, is a two day lead. Okay, you just have to play with it a little bit. You can also do a leg, for example. You can say, uh, instead of plus one, we could say plus three, okay? And we see, we see now we have a leg show up there. So there's, there's various flexibility that you can you can do in this case. Okay, so that is with a seven-day schedule. So I'm just going to take out. I'm just going to take out the dates again. Now there are other active. There are other schedules where it's not appropriate to schedule time on the the weekends. A lot of business projects you don't do work normally on the weekends. You have Monday to uh, Friday. So in this case, you see once I did this. The weekends are grayed out. That means work is not to be scheduled there. And you can see that the four days here is Thursday, Friday, and then it skips over the weekend, uh, and then it's Monday, Tuesday. And, and it, it, that will, will, will be done uh, for you. Now, again, we can just enter dates directly in here. So example, we wouldn't, we shouldn't enter a weekend date into here, but we could enter um, you know, Wednesday, April 10th. Okay, so we could we could do that. And again, the seven days will skip over the uh, the weekend. But you may also, though, want to enter a dependency, you, you enter a formula. Now, it's important in this case, you do it differently. So instead of just saying equals, um, you know, F7 plus one, we now enter a different type of formula. We actually have to enter uh, what's called an Excel function. And the function is the workday function. We say equals workday, left bracket, the date we want to attach to, which is again, F7. And then again, instead of plus one, we say comma one, okay? And now it'll now choose the next workday. And if the next work, if, if the next day after, if this was on a Friday, it would choose the following Monday. It'll it would be smart enough to do that. Okay, so it equals the um, we've entered using a workday formula. Again, here if we wanted to, um, if we wanted to to uh, have this occur the day after uh, this, uh, you know, on the Friday, we would say equals workday. And then we would say that end date, comma one. Okay, and you notice how it it does that. Here's another example where if we said, well, let's let's have a bit of a lag. Let's make it. Let's let's have a one day lag. Okay, and we'll press enter. Notice how it jumps over Saturday Sunday, right? And so instead of you know normally if it was a just a one day lag, it would be on the Friday. The two-day leg really then starts on the Monday, okay? So if you use a Monday to Friday, you need to use the workday uh, function, okay? And then finally, we'll just do it one more time. It doesn't have to be uppercase as well. And uh, let's say this one, we want to say comma minus one. 
again, you can do leads and legs. So you notice how that now brings it in um, by a day. <clears throat> so that all that all is done. You just keep doing that now. You enter the information, the progress, and the start dates for all of the remaining uh, activities. And we'll see them all. I'm not going to do them here because that would take a while. And don't forget, there's there's some blanks here because um, if there's space for a larger number of work packages than we used for the case study uh, video. But don't forget about the closing phase down here. There is another start date for the last, the close the project activity that will need to be entered. Okay, so that is the... Uh, project schedule of how to create a project schedule. Thanks for watching this video.